We also make sure that if you're selling in California, that you can abide by the rules there under something called CCPA and allow buyers to opt out of this. So we enable that and you can install it. But it's pretty straightforward. It says like, here's what happened. So you agree to share data and then your data is added to the pool. And again, this is, it's not moving anywhere. It's always been a chop fight. It just allows our systems to now look at it. And then that is the data that is used to generate audiences. It's, it's basically prior purchases and prior customer behavior over the past 90 or 180 days uh, that they've been coming to your site. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Imagine your long-awaited order just got delivered. You open up the package and as luck would have it, your new shirt is in the wrong size. So what do you do? You open up your laptop, you begin a return, maybe even an exchange, but all you see is a customer service phone number. And if you're like me in a situation like this, you really don't want to talk to anybody, let alone write an email. So what do you do? You don't have days, let alone a week or more to wait for a response. The ideal next step is to process your own return online, drop it off at a nearby pickup location and move on with your life. And this is what a hassle-free return process is supposed to be like. And it is a reality for brands who are powered by Loop Returns. Now Loop is the only returns platform that helps Shopify brands to create an ideal post-purchase experience. And they don't just handle returns, they also make it easy for Shopify brands to incentivize exchanges so you can grow your business and make happier customers. You can find out why over 1,600 of Shopify's biggest brands like Allbirds, Chubby Shorts, and Patagonia, and so many more all choose Loop. 100%, go check them out today at loopreturns.com and learn more. Well, hey there, my name is Steve Hutt. I'm Senior Merchant Success Manager here at Shopify, and welcome back to the fifth season of e-commerce Fastlane. Now, if this is your first time listening or you're a weekly subscriber, I seriously appreciate the fact that you're taking time and listening to the show today. I know there's plenty of podcast choices in Shopify e-commerce and direct-to-consumer marketing, and just the fact that you're here today means the world to me, and I know it does for my featured guest. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show. We have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store, powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, if you're an ambitious lifelong learner, which you likely are since you're here today, you're definitely in the right place. I also highly recommend to get the full value of today's episode that you click through from your podcast app to the show notes at ecommercefastlane.com. And there you'll have the full transcript links and then any resources. I know we're going to mention quite a few of them today, but they'll all be there at ecommercefastlane.com. Now, today's episode, uh, my guest is Daniel Debo from Shopify, and he's the vice president of product, uh, I guess the demand generation. I like to call his team the ROAS team, and we'll dig into that in a minute. Both alpha and beta testers have been using this platform for, I guess, nearly a year now. And this summer was launched Shopify audiences, and it started with uh, the Shopify Plus brands first. And the app and the underlying technology really are there to help merchants to find their next best customer. We'll talk a lot about the CPAs and the the ROAS increasing and just some of the ups and downs and the turmoil that's happening right now and why this product was built. Um, Hopefully, we can dig into some case studies, too, about uh, some success, early success from some brands. So let's welcome Daniel to to e-commerce Fastlane. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who's listening. I, too, agree that there's a lot of things that you can listen to, and I really appreciate that people are going to give us a chance, and hopefully this is a useful and insightful, educational, maybe a little bit fun to listen to over the next little while. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about the Shopify audiences product itself, because I know it's been creating a lot of buzz in the marketplace. I know recently Shopify released what they were calling Shopify Editions, which is a kind of, I guess, every six months they're releasing, I guess, a roundup, but a very visually compelling roundup of some of the products and services that Shopify has been building. And I'd argue that Shopify audiences was the lead 
to the 2020 summer edition when they talk about how to find your next best customer and just finding customers in general because the conversion rates um, you know are quite high and these you know this way you can get a lot better performing ads and things like that and so I just would love for you to kind of share with our market I and mean, everybody listening today all about the product just in general on a high level first and let's just talk a little bit about you know how you, you know you believe this product is actually helping to expand the value of kind of what is available to brands to acquire net new site visitors and in this case actual conversions sure there's lots of places to start but i think the best place to start with think shopify is like what is our mission and our mission is to help merchants help entrepreneurs become independent and for a long time in our history we've always worked in tandem and we still do work in tandem Right. Uh, where merchants are able to set up a store, make it beautiful, provide all the service that the people would expect from a much larger area. And we do it in a simple and easy way. And we've always said, hey, merchants, it's up to you to go find your customers, right? We'll give you channels. We'll give you ways to get there. And that's worked incredibly well for so many merchants. And just, you know, your, your, your listeners know the story of literally millions of merchants on Shopify. Um, a, a couple of years ago, we noticed that ads were going to get harder. And we wanted to say, what can we do uniquely to help our merchants with this? And that's really the question that was asked and where the, the audience product started from and where the ROAS team that you mentioned, which is, yeah, part of the demand team here at Shopify. We've got a whole bunch of things under demand, but ROAS is one of them. And really was like, how do we help our merchants improve their return on ad spend? It was very simple. And it was really like, what do we think we can do? And I think at the core of the product, it was basically, we think we can help find the next buyer, find the next customer. Uh, we think we have a large set of data that we can use in a safe way that will help our merchants be better able to find people who are in market and looking for products like the ones that they sell. And if we could help them with that and do it in tandem with our ad platform partners, this would be a great win. And so that's what we are happy to say we have today. Merchants can go into audiences, pick a product that they want to sell, and the audience system will generate an audience of people that, and we can explain how we think are in market. And then they can take that audience and go run a campaign on a third-party ad platform like Meta, um, which is where we are right now. So that's basically how it is and what it, wh why it, where it came from and, and what it does. And I'm happy to expand more as you ask more questions. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about the origin story of this product. Like, what, why do you believe that like now was a great time to actually have a go-to-market strategy with it and release it out. I know it's been alpha and beta tested for a while just to, I guess, to almost prove your hypothesis that, you know, that Shopify does have some interesting data that they can use in a safe manner with these ad platforms to, you know, improve the ROAS. The reality is I know it massively works. Um, I have many brands that are currently mm -hmm. active with audiences, but let's talk about why you believe specifically right now is very ironically great timing to have this available for plus brands yeah i mean look there's a regulatory and competitive marketplace that is essentially changing the way that ad targeting has worked historically or the way that it evolved and you know if you think about what you're going to try and look for customers you're going to try and build a segment that's built around um you know demographics right like i'm 48 years old i have four yep. kids Maybe I'm in the market for a dog collar yeah. <laughs> or interest, yeah. right? Like I am clicking on dog collar pictures and I like dogs and I have not dog. <laughs> I mean, that's all really yeah. helpful. But the, the signal that's really important is like, hey, am I looking for dog things or did I just buy something that suggests that I probably going to be a market? Like if I bought a dog bed, probably I'm going to buy a dog right. collar. And, you know, what the changes that we just I described initially that were like sort of the catalyst of it. They're making it harder for uh, third-party ad platforms to use data about that intent, what people are looking for, what they're searching for, what they've just bought. It's getting more and more difficult for them to connect that to their interest in demographic graph. And so one thing that's happening, though, is that behavior, that data is captured and collected on merchant storefronts. That's where you go to buy a product. That's where you go to browse for something or look for something that you're interested in. And so... The question we asked was, how can we help merchants help themselves? So typically, many people have heard about this metaphor of, you know, Shopify is arming the rebels, right? Where we're giving the tools to these rebels to go off and be independent. You know, maybe the way to think about what audiences is, is this isn't just arming the rebels. This is creating the rebel alliance, right? It's allowing these merchants to work together. And so that was really what we said is like, how can we make all the merchants better off? 
if they agree, and this is how the product works, they agree to share customer data with each other, again, in a, in a fashion that doesn't impede them competitively, doesn't put them offside with regulators, is something that's appropriate. But if we could allow them to share this data with each other, that would make all of them better off, right? They'd all be able to understand. And it's just kind of like, not to get too wonky, but it's kind of like Ricardian games from trade, or maybe the best examples is like, there's lots of examples of merchants who collaborate indirectly with each other, even like, you know, in certain districts of the city, like all the flower shops will be there, all the diamond shops. Well, it's because, hey, that's where all the customers are. And if you think about shop by storefront, that's where the customers are. So these merchants can work together to generate audiences that help all of them perform. We thought that was something that we could do really effectively. And, you know, candidly, we don't charge for this capability. This is something that, you know, there are products in the market that exist like that. And historically, you contribute your data and you pay to get an audience. We, we've not done that. We've chosen that to, to really help merchants out in this time when something that they depend upon, the sort of general ad ecosystem is not working quite as well as they wanted it to. And we're working with all the partners to try and make it effective. Um, I think it's incredibly important to understand how much our merchants use ads to find customers who want their niche products, right? It, it's really important. We have a huge interest in helping these merchants in this Rebel Alliance come together to do that. I love, it. I love the, the Rebel Alliance. That's uh, I've always heard arming the rebels. I've been in for Shopify just shy of five years also. And uh, yeah, that's been a, an ongoing conversation about, you know, just building a path that leads to more entrepreneurs and then, you know, and, and independent retail, but arming the rebels with the right products and services. But now, yeah, you're, just, you're actually the Rebel Alliance now. So I love it. Everyone's working together. And I've also found it's been quite successful too. a lot of, uh, you know, there's certain apps that really help with aligning yourself with other non-competitive products and maybe on a post-purchase experience on a thank you page and kind of recommending other tools or other products that can kind of be complementary to what they just purchased. And there's ways of kind of building relationships between brands. And I know we're, you know, working on that internally also trying to figure out how can we make complementary ideas. One thing I love about this tool right now is the fact that at the end of the day, it really is creating more actual conversions for the same amount of spend you have. And I think I'm going to unpack a lot about how, because I have quite a few brands using the tool right now. I just want to make sure people understand that it's working and it's working very effectively. There still is some experimentation required, but it's so interesting how well it is working. I do want to pivot a bit to the team though behind the product because I think, you know, from my perspective, I'm not a product guy. I'm more of a marketing guy, but I find it interesting how you were able to build a team. And I wonder if you could kind of share with our audience a little bit about just maybe the mindset or just how did you find the right experts and then build a team? Like there obviously there was a thought that this problem needed to be solved, but then how do you find both internal or external team members and assemble them all together and then create this magic that this app actually released? Sure. You know, I think Simon Sinek wrote a book called Start With The Why, and I think that's really where this started. And I think a lot of our success can be attributed to. Look, I I find that the people at Shopify are incredibly mission aligned. I know that I tell teams that like, I'm here because I meet people in my regular walks of life who say, hey, if it wasn't for Shopify, we would have lost our house during COVID. We would have lost our business. Or people who are like, yeah, I'm actually succeeding in a business because of Shopify. Or just walking to a merchant store in a place when I'm traveling and see their eyes light up when I ask about their POS system or how they're getting sales online. So the why matters a lot. And the why in this case was like real. Like we started by just talking to merchants and, you know, we could sense their pain. We could sense their, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say the word desperation, yep. but yeah, some of these marketers were really desperate that like sort of what was working before wasn't working. And of course, in online marketing, things are always changing. You always experiment, you always find new tactics, but this was different. This was something that was like material. And so I think starting with the why, we had a group of people who were very motivated. I mean, you're already at Shopify, you want to help entrepreneurs. You want to help these merchants. But this was like an acute pain that we could see that it was having. And it's material, right? Our merchants will often spend 10, 20% of their revenue, all their revenue on online ads or online marketing. So it's a, that's a huge input cost. That's after cost of goods sold, that could be one of their biggest things. And so we started with the, the why. We had a very open mind to the question of like, what are we trying to do here? It was not, oh, we're going to go build this thing. We actually were very expansive of like, here's the problem. And what are a bunch of different ways? And we did that. We looked at dozens of different potential solutions. We prototyped a few. There are actually other solutions 
that came out of this exploration that are still yet to become and that are being built right now. So I don't want to give them all away. <laughs> but it wasn't just this, but this was the first of many. And then what we did is just on the people, we found uh, it was a mix, a mix of like people with deep, deep Shopify experience who had worked on other products and had a long time history here. And then uh, new people, new team members who joined our data science team, who joined as data engineers, joined our development team here. You know, candidly, I went and reached out to some. I had been lucky enough to be a co-founder of a few companies. I, I called some of the folks that I thought were some of the very best engineers I'd ever worked with before from prior companies and said, look, we're working on this incredibly important mission aligned product. Would you like to come be part of that? And some of them joined and we were lucky for that. But I think really the other thing that's interesting about the team that's built this is intentionally, it's not just ad tech people. It's actually people who come from a broad range of data science expertise, people who've worked in large CPG companies, people who've worked in academic settings, people who've worked in like, you know, high throughput computing environments or manufacturing. And and that was actually important because we wanted to take a look at all these problems with a fresh eye. You know, I interviewed a lot of people to be like leaders on this team. And it was very similar patterns of thought, like, here's how you do it. This is what you should do. And we wanted people who are thinking differently about this because you know, this is not just the end of a journey for Shopify to help our merchants with return on ad spend. This is the first of many, many steps, you know, like Shopify does. We want to kind of look at the problem from first principles, think about what the world should have, how it should look, uh, what merchants would want. And I think that's been really great to the team. I think you're right. It is a relatively small team here. Uh, we're growing. And then also, you know, we did bring in and we were lucky enough to bring in a few folks who had some really deep ad tech experience who were excited because they immediately saw the potential of what we could do to help merchants and help entrepreneurship. I think that's the team today. It's pretty exciting, pretty fun group. I, I think the third element was it's very much run like a startup inside Shopify. I mean, Shopify itself, it amazes me, even at the scale, is still very much like a startup. It runs very fast. It's very agile it response. And I think merchants know that about us. But this was like, how can we go even faster because this is an urgent need? I think the last thing I'd say about how we built it was very incrementally, experimentally, right? We wanted to make sure that we weren't violating kind of precepts about what people come to Shopify for. So for example, the fact that merchants are sharing their customer data, you know, historically, we have never, ever kind of opened that door. We always said the merchant's data is their own. And so we wanted to be really careful about the way that we framed it, the way that we spoke about it, and the way that we use the trust that we have earned over many, many years for millions of merchants that we make sure that this was a trust building exercise as we entered into sharing customer data, about like how we put safeguards, how we would communicate it, make sure. So we sort of experimented with a series of iterations you alluded to earlier until we were like, yeah, we think this is right and this is going to work. And, you know, that's how it's played out. It's been really positive and it's fun seeing the excitement of merchants who are, as you said, seeing some incredible results. Some merchants who are using this are really seeing breakthrough results in it. That's just so motivating for us to continue to improve. One thing I want to talk about is how the product actually works, because I, and it's hard sometimes maybe without having a video and showing it, but I, I want to make sure people understand like the simplicity. I think there was a lot of UI and UX that went into how do we build this thing so it's easy to use, but powerful. And for me, most brands, when I tell them about it, like they, they love the concept, they love the idea, they've, you know, they've read the Shopify editions and other different types of information that I've sent them and, you know, on my one-on-one -on -one calls I have monthly. But one thing I say, you know, just go to the app store right now. First of all, let's see if you're even available for it. And the short answer is if you're on Shopify Plus, it's available to you right now, providing you're in North America. And so, it's pretty straightforward. Just go to the app store, you add it on, and then it, you land on this page that says, you know, find your next customer by joining the shared audience network. And there's a, there's a nice big green activate button that talks about how to activate and share your data, but then how you also get data. So can you walk us through a little bit about what is actually happening under the hood? Because I think people are just maybe, as you said, a little bit apprehensive, but we're Shopify and we want to make sure that we're very intentional about how we're using customer data and the, the non-PII, the non person and identifiable information and the fact that you're still using meta. I think there's some miscommunication about, do I use my existing ads that I already have in the Facebook ads manager? Um, are you like, it's just the import and the export. Then there's a little bit of confusion about how the workflow is. And can you walk us through that? Sure. Sure, sure. Let's, let's, let's clear it up. I mean, I, I'll say from the outset, it is very easy to get started. In fact, we've done a bunch of user testing and the videos are funny. Sometimes people are like, that's it. That, I'm done. Like, really? That's, that's all I had to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah. And that's intentional. <laughs> like a lot of ad tech, sure. frankly, by the way, yeah. I knew nothing about ads when I started this project and I still probably know less than most of the people on the team. But you know, what I found was 
a lot of these systems were like, you know, kind of space shuttle, like a lot of dots, a lot of variables, a lot of options. And and frankly, if you're a baker, you you build an amazing dog collar, you make a great handbag, you have an incredible beauty, the skincare line, you know, that's not your core thing, I think. And we want to make it easy for you. The inspiration in some ways for the product was like an elevator in the sense that like, you know, when you go to an elevator, you don't even tell, like figure out where the elevator is, tell it to come up. You know, oh, you're, I'm on six, you're on three, come up three floors then add three more floors because I want to go to nine. No, you just say like, button up, you know, take me to nine, right? That's it. And, and, and sort of that's the design. So how would the experience work for a merchant? It's just to clarify. So first, you have to be a Shopify Plus merchant. You have to also be using Shopify payments. And yes, it is for North America only for now. Um, we're, you know, yeah. So it'll expand in the future. But right now, those are, those are, those are the constraints. You, you're right. It's an app. So you go to the app store. You, if you're eligible, you install the app. And then what it's going to ask you for is, do you agree to share your customer data? And we give you a bunch of information that you should know as a merchant about what happens to your data, how you should make sure that you have the right permission to use the data. Shopify has a really great example privacy policy that you can use. We also make sure that if you're selling in California, that you can abide by the rules there under something called CCPA and allow buyers to opt out of this. So we enable that and you can install it. But it's pretty straightforward. It says like, here's what happened. So you agree to share data and then your data is added to the pool. And again, this is, it's not moving anywhere. It's always been a chop fight. It just allows our systems to now look at it. And then that is the data that is used to generate audiences. It's, it's basically prior purchases and prior customer behavior over the past 90 or 180 days uh, that they've been coming to your site. And so that's the enablement. And then the creation is really simple. You go into the app, you're going to have a product picker, essentially, and it's going to say, which product would you like to run ads for? Now, sometimes merchants ask, well, I have lots of products. And so we'd say, you can pick a representative one, you can experiment. Um, uh, maybe in the future, we'll expand it. But right now, it's one product at a time. And what the system does is it essentially looks at the many, many, many millions of people who have now are represented by all the merchants in, in the network. And it says, okay, you're, you want to sell this product. Let's do some math. That's what it does. Machine learning does some math and says, what are products that are predicates of this? What are things that people have purchased? That's one signal. There are other signals that we add and uh, I'm not going to go into every detail that we'll think about like what, what would help us figure out who's in market for this? And then it'll generate uh, a list, a hashed list uh, for you. And then you can export that list to Facebook today to, for, for running on, on Facebook or, or Meta. And over the coming year, we'll be adding other platforms like TikTok or Pinterest or Snap or others so that you can run ads with these audiences on those places. Once the audience has been generated and it can take a little bit of time, it gets exported over to, uh, in this case, Facebook. And then you go in there and you can use it as you would. So a couple of best practices, we encourage you to experiment like all ad tech products. There's a variable here. We don't control your creative and your bid strategy. So you're going to have to work with that and find out what works well with the audience we've generated. We encourage you to do lookalikes. So why do we encourage that? We've seen people have great performance combining sort of what Shopify knows with what Facebook knows to create very large audiences. Typically, they have lower CPMs than the pure audience that we generate, which could be two to four million names. But what we find is the smaller audiences have higher conversion rate. So in the merchants where the right combination of product AOV, conversion rate on site and CPA or CPA that they're paying for, cost per action, is resulting in some cases in like really big positive increases in their return on ad spend because while the audience might be a little more expensive, it's also converting better. And so where it's working, that's really where people are having it. The lookalike helps to lower that CPM, but we're also seeing great behavior, uh, performance there. Other sort of best practices we encourage are for people to, um, there's some labeling stuff and we provide all this, but it's to go back frequently and, and update that audience because it's based on you know most recent purchase. And so people are shopping every day. And so more people are coming into that we can refresh who are more recently showing intent signals that we think you should use. A pause there, but that's it. It's really simple. You go and you pick a product, generates an audience, you go run a campaign against that audience, rinse and repeat, continue to find out what works. And, and that's what we're seeing our merchants experiment with. Now, online shopping can feel risky for some customers. You know, imagine if your order arrives in the wrong size. This totally happened to me recently or in the wrong color or it just doesn't look right on you. And there really can be hundreds of reasons why you may want to return a product. And I totally get it. And that's why Loop Returns makes it easy for Shopify brands to encourage exchanges rather than refunds. 
We all know that returns don't equal goodbyes, they equal new hellos. And Loop really has a slick process to make it easy for a customer to have a fast return or exchange. I see why thousands of Shopify brands like Pit Viper, Somersault, and Princess Polly, they all choose Loop as their return partner. Now is the time to improve your post-purchase experience. So go check them out today at loopreturns.com. Yeah, I'd have, it's interesting. I've gone through this workflow actually live with a few brands just to kind of show them how easy it is to do. And it really is by selecting. I always say like, you know, go and take a look. Like, what is your best selling SKU? And let's do a test with that one first. You know, if you're selling boots, uh, is there a certain pair of boots that are that are the most popular? What variant is it? Maybe that's the hero image we're going to use. And let the audience's app kind of find the audience for you. Um, set that up, export that out. Boom, you're still using the Facebook ads manager. Like, it's not like Shopify is not taking over. Like you, like you did make a comment about the fact that there are other solutions out there, a little bit of a black box going on about give them money to help you help them find the uh, the next possible customer. Ours is a little bit different where, yes, we understand buyer intent and we're making some decisions on who we believe your next possible customer is, but it's based on our data that we have makes me think a little bit about maybe being devil's advocate a little bit too though and this has been brought up before Um, i just would love to hear your feedback on it is that even though it's not just anecdotally we have a better ROAS than maybe Facebook does directly in a lot of cases. Um, I don't say every case, but in a lot of cases. I know both Alpha and Beta, I've been following along to kind of see some of the early adopters of this tool. And it's been pretty impressive of kind of like what has come out of it, hence why it's true go, full go to market right now in North America. But like if you compare to what Facebook does, I mean, Facebook really does matter. They want to spend all of your money and they also want to do the best they can through their machine learning and how they can optimize campaigns for brands. Cause that's the pushback that I got maybe in the early days until they actually tested it. But I'd like to hear it from your side. Like, look, why is it similar or different to what Facebook is already doing versus what we're doing? Sure. I'm going to take a step back, though, and answer a question that I think is really important to understand. You asked about, like, what do we do differently? The other thing that we're doing with this product that's different is that we are measuring it using a different form of attribution, which is the email-based attribution. We know who we told you to look for, and we know when they come and convert. And that helps us not infer uh, the contribution of what the audience says. We can kind of know it. The other thing is, like, we're extremely transparent about how we calculate the conversions how we think we can attribute uh, success to this. And we very openly tell people how to do it because what we're trying to do here is help merchants. We are not, we're trying to improve return on ad spend. I think the second thing I want to clear up is that like, this is not a question of better than Facebook or better than Snap. It's a collaboration of using the best of what we have with the best of what they have or Snap or TikTok or any other partner. We, we're not in the business of selling ads and we don't want to do that. We want to help our merchants get return on ad spend. And there's a great alignment around that. So even the example I gave you, which is use a Shopify audience seed, use that with Facebook. It's the combination of the data sets that both companies have experience with that's actually driving these great results. And so it's not an either or, and you can use them together. And I think that's the key to understand this is not that. And then in terms of data, I mean, look, you can see that there's been public statements that like, it's just because of the regulatory changes and because of the technical changes that, you know, primarily Apple has brought through a series of choices that it has sort of created gaps in data that makes it harder for targeting and measurement to occur. But those changes don't quite affect Shopify because again, this is where these transactions occur. They don't affect us in the same way. And so we're able to bring the best of both companies together to you know, help improve what has been kind of a pretty crummy situation. Mm-hmm. So let's get into a case study now, because I think, you know, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And people, a lot of times, they just feel very inspired when they hear about, hey, well, another brand in cosmetics or, you know, in whatever their industry is. It'd be nice to be able to hear a story. I don't know if, you, I, know, I know there is a public link um, that I'll have in the show notes that will have a list of, I don't know how many case studies we have now live on the site, but there's got to be about five or six of them, I think, that are publicly available right now um, on the Plus blog. I'll put a link to a, a few of those, but is there any one notable that you could maybe discuss today yeah sure 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 look i mean you're right there are case studies in fact i was i was having a great conversation with one of my marketing colleagues this morning and he was saying you know daniel like people are coming to us saying they want to be a case study right now because they're having these (laughs) great results which is really fun 
I mean, I, look, I, I'd also want to say this. Not everybody has these amazing results. It's not like a magic panacea that automatically makes everybody do better. You have to experiment. You have to take some risk and capital mm-hmm. and spend. You have to try variants. You have to do all the things that like continue to be part of the journey of a growth marketer for a DTC brand. And what we have seen though is that the merchants who persist, follow our best practices, are starting to see real and substantial uh, results. So I just want to you know make sure people you know I want to be level. Our mission is to help merchants here, and I think I'm not doing the service if I say, oh, here's this magic thing we fixed everything. You know, go home. That's not the case. This is just a really powerful tool to help <laughs> yeah, um, get you back on track. Let, let me talk about Lamaru, which is a, a great skincare brand. Uses a proprietary method of cell communication to, to have these effective and essential products. And they started to use audience in spring 2021. They started to see their CAC go up. They started to see CPMs go up by, you know, 300%. And they are dependent upon this full funnel marketing. Like many other DTC brands, they rely on finding new customers. As much as they rely on the loyal ones to keep coming back, they need to keep filling that bucket of new merchant, of new buyers coming into the system. And as soon as it became available, like around May of 2022, they started to use it right away. And their results are amazing. They saw a 26, 27% decrease in customer acquisition, two and a half times ROAS. They started to see that 73% of all their paid acquisition was coming from the audiences that uh, mm. they were generating with Shopify. Importantly, and this is really key, is that their their conversion rate, their quick uh, conversion rate went up like 48%. And they saw a 6.5% increase in add to carts. So... What that's telling you is that we were really effective with them in finding the right buyers, people who were really in market and interested in their product. And, you know, I think the fact that they were just not able to do that before and they're starting to do that now is is wonderful. I mean, you, you also ask about yeah. emotions. You want to know how people react. I mean, look, our team is super pumped when our merchants yeah. are doing well. That That's the best thing to hear about. And they yeah. you know, literally say thank you and appreciate it. But I got to tell you, like, we have dozens more of these experiences where we, you know, talk to the merchants. Sometimes they're on video. And, you know, there was someone the other day, it was pretty funny. He's like, I just don't understand why anyone wouldn't do this. Like, this is such an easy, no brainer yeah. thing to do. Yeah. You know, I think the one thing I'm going to emphasize is it still does require some patience and, and persistence. Mm-hmm. It's not a magic bullet in any regard, but we are definitely see it become quite effective um, in the sort of t- toolkit that merchants are bringing to bear to, you know, continue to find customers at a reasonable cost. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing that. It's good to just good to hear that. I'll make sure I put this links, like I said, to uh, a few of these other case studies. I know there's likely a lot more coming down the pike, no doubt, because I have a lot of happy yeah, brands. Yeah, we've got it's just <laughs> totally it's unreal. We've got Bubs Naturals or Blender Bottle yep. or Happy Hippo mm-hmm. or High. Like these are all brands that are seeing real impact from using Shopify audiences, and that's like that is super gratifying. Yeah, um, it's really exciting. So other than the experimentation side of being a growth marketer and using this tool, maybe in tandem with Meta, are there any other kind of best practices that you want to share? I know you mentioned a bit about maybe potentially refreshing your audience every week. Is, is this something that's that you're seeing as a must do or anything else you can think of? Well, I mean, look, the system is always looking at who's coming to sites and obviously fresher people have higher intent. I'd say, yeah, refresh every seven yeah. to 14 days. I think that is counterintuitive okay. because a lot of people are worried about the learning process. You know, heads up, we're going to improve uh, audiences, we think, by making it continuous. So you don't have to do that. We'll just constantly and regularly update, and refresh. So that's going to be an improvement. We're learning online right. about how to make right. the product even more effective for people. Um, I think another best practice is to categorize your product. So Shopify has built in product classification, but it's always better when a merchant makes sure the products they want us mm-hmm. to find an audience, they've tagged it properly and classified it because that helps uh, the machine learning go off and figure out, okay, what exactly is this that I'm going to try and find predictors of who would want to buy something here? I think like labeling your audiences as Shopify audience when they go over, I think doing lookalikes in addition to sort of like um, raw measures is really effective and test and learn. I can't emphasize enough how merchants have to do that. I think, I think another, you know, candid best practice is that sometimes merchants put like, you know, they're, they're spending $50,000 or $100,000 a month and then they run like a $50 test. And they're like, well, you know, I didn't see the results. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> yeah. you just can't do that. Yeah, You're going to yeah. have to commit to a few percentage of your spend, at least, so that you can get enough data, enough numbers to see if how this is working and where, where to use it in your funnel and what to do it for. Um, and of course, once you become a Shopify audience user, we have you have access to all these best practices. We continue to update people. And we also are educating our MSMs yeah. so that they can help their uh, merchants. Yes, I- 
gone through that enablement. It was uh, very epic and it really did help me with one pagers and, you know, just some good talking points and things. And that's, you know, the reasons why so many of the brands that I manage um, have fully adopted the tool and absolutely love the app. Um, and I know it's uh, making a measurable impact and they're happy. They're happy when you bring uh, these new kind of uh, products or services, you know, to market. And I think for the most part, people are pretty open to wanting to test, but you make a really good thing about it's testing and learning from it. It's not a set it and forget it kind of a, a process. It's kind of work in tandem, but uh, nonstop analyzing the data and seeing where are we at, what's working, what's not working and making slight pivots and stuff. So I think that's uh, pretty cool. Um, you, you alluded a little bit about the fact that right now it's currently meta. So going Facebook right now currently, and there's some opportunities for other ad platforms uh, moving into the future. Are you able to share a little bit? You know, you can't really reveal the public roadmap of the product or any features and stuff, but like, how do you believe the product is going to continue to evolve maybe outside of these extra ad platforms? Sure, sure. Well, so you're right. Let's think about a few areas. So one is, as with any software product, and especially with Shopify, we want to make it incredibly easy. And so we are constantly looking at the experience of how people sign up, where their where is their comprehension issues. You you alluded to saying, oh, there's some confusion about this or that. And like, we know it and we're on it. And in fact, we've already shipped the UX improvements. We <laughs> yeah. added more help yeah. documents because yeah, we want people <laughs> okay. to feel very safe and comfortable as they use okay. this and really have transparency. We don't we don't want anyone to sort of not know what they're getting into as as they do this and how they can react with it. So you'll right. see UX improvements that make it continually easier to use. I think the second thing you'll see is, as you mentioned, more platforms. So more ways to not just use Facebook or Meta, but to mm -hmm. use Snap, Pinterest, TikTok, and others who are all quite interested in seeing like how can we improve our performance uh, using Shopify. I think a third area of improvement and probably the most important, it's just performance is going to get better without getting into all the details. We are very uh, excited mm -hmm. about some improvements in the underlying machine learning infrastructure, the algorithms that are getting better and better, like sort of we're, we're not on V0 anymore. We're, we're continually improving. Like, how do we predict? And then we're also increasing the size of the pool. So as more and more merchants discover that audience is available to them and, 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 and join and, and add their customers to the network, that's increasing the spread and diversity of information that will help us find buyers who are in market for the products that you're looking for, as well, adding more signals to the algorithm. So thinking about different things that we can do that'll be helpful and predictive. So all of those are on the roadmap and we can see that, but they translate into this third item. This is really the most important improvement is just much better performance. And so that's, that's really about saying, you know, I don't think we'll ever get to it's a magic bullet and not a magic works, but just more and more merchants having success out of the gate, uh, easier, easier to get that done. Um, I think those are some of the big improvements that are going to come. I think I alluded to another one, which is we're going to try and get to a place where you can yeah, continuously, uh, you don't have to come and update your audiences. They're auto updated for you. Um, and you know, some more, some more other cool stuff, but I don't want to give away all the fun surprises, but you, you know, what I'd say is that you, you asked me mm -hmm. about the team and how mm -hmm. we built it. And I want to go back to that. Like we started with the why <laughs> we think it's no. incredibly important to help we want the people here care about the people who are listening to this podcast. Yeah. We want those people to be independent, to, to do whatever it means to become profitable in the business and employ people and give people products that they love. Like that's, that's a great place to be. And the fact that we are getting so much positive feedback and videos from merchants and like text messages saying, okay, I love it, but here's what I want you to do is like driving us even more to make something even more amazing. And, you know, we're just getting started. We are just getting started here at Shopify on this mission that we think is really important. This is lovely. I mean, you know, I have a lot of takeaways. I mean, I'm a Shopify employee also. And, and uh, you know, selfishly, you know, the reason why I have this podcast is because I really want to take the intentional space to really go deep and to learn something new and then, you know, pay that forward to the 50 brands that I manage, um, you know, and then the 400 on my team that I'm on, I'm always paying it forward to them. And that's what I'm hoping everybody gets out of this podcast is that we, we, we did take the intentional space. This is your product and, and your team and you know what you're building and you know what the future looks like you know what success looks like today also i just want to publicly congratulate both you and the team for um, the incredible amount of hard work i've been following the project internally for quite a while and was excited to see the the alpha and beta results and now i'm seeing all the amazing results now that are happening with brands even brands that i manage that don't have public case studies but i know not just anecdotally that it's working for them so i just want to thank you so much for that um i also feel that you know it, it, 
one big takeaway that I have also is that for those that maybe are on Shopify Plus, you're in America and you're on Shopify Payments um, and you've not tried this yet, you're doing yourself a disservice by not trying it. You really do need, I'm not trying to push you too hard, but if you were in my book and, and I was managing you, I would really highly recommend that you at least test it because if you don't test it, then the answer is no, it doesn't work. Um, and the reality is it does work and it can work if you're willing to put in the effort. Um, and you know, Shopify is, you know, has the wide amount of data that's making this all possible thanks to your team. So I just wanted to thank you for that. What's our call to action for this podcast now? Like, where do you want to send those plus brands that are listening today? What sort of things should they do next if they want to get involved? Sure, sure. Well, let me just, before I get to that, I want to double click on your point about thanking the team. Uh -huh. I am not an engineer, a designer. I, <laughs> I just use words and ideas. Yep. I don't actually build the thing. <laughs> it, it is an incredibly dedicated group of people who have put in a ton of learning and work and dedication yep. because they care uh -huh. about the why. Uh, and so I want to thank them too. Uh, I think it's in, in a lot of fun. They're a really great group of people who care about what they're doing. To your question about the call, to, actually, before I get to that, also, I want to I want to address something. Being said, there's some confusion. Not only is it a free product that's available to you if you're on Plus and pay, there's limited downside. So if you are trepidatious about putting your customer data into the network, understand that you can leave at any time and you take your customer data with you when you leave. So it's it's not a one way door; it's a two way door. We wanted to make it safe. People can try it if they don't feel this is something they, that they're getting benefit out they can leave. I think a few other things is just, just to cut to the nub, you can't use this to competitively target your competitors. You have no idea where those, you can't say like, Hey, I sell handbags, go after my number one handbag competitor. It doesn't work that way. And then because of the breadth of uh, like the number of merchants in it, there's no one merchant contributing a really material amount to any audience that we generate. Like there's just no way it's pro competitive uh, type behavior, especially when it comes right. to customer data. So I, I think that's just important for people to know. It's okay call to action. I mean, call to action okay. is to try the product. And how do you do that? Yes, you you go you. to the app store, you search for Shopify audiences. As we talked about up front, it's really simple. <laughs> you install it, you're yeah. going to ask to approve the data sharing, and then you go in and pick a product that you want to campaign with, generate an audience, it'll automatically export to Facebook. And then you go in there to the ad manager and you run your campaign. You know, you're probably going to want to set up a series of testing regimens and experimentation at first, like any new uh, tactic in, in marketing or in ads. That's what we would suggest. You kind of have to set yourself up, as I mentioned, for, you know, spending, a, you know, a real amount of money and for a period of time to sort of figure out how it works for you. But the call to action is to try it. I mean, I think it's as the merchant I was talking to the other day or saw the video the other day said, this is just a no brainer. I, I what what have you got to lose and only to gain in a world where it's just harder and harder to find the next customer. And we are really excited that just by being on the Shopify platform, being a Shopify plus merchant, being part of the Alliance, being part of the Rebel Alliance, that you can all be better off together, that independent merchants all together can, can find customers, help them find a product that's really great for them. That's a call to action. That's it. Pretty straightforward. You can also call your MSM. I think that's the other thing. If you want some help or support, we've done a lot to train our MSMs here and they should be able to speak to you about it. And we're happy to get on with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for those brands of mine that I manage, if you are not online, then you, you definitely have to listen to the show. Thank you for listening to it, but let's get you on audiences. I know it's going to make a difference. You know, Daniel, once again, thanks for coming on the show. I really massively appreciate it. You know, you know, the mission of Shopify really is to make commerce better for everyone. And, you know, and I mentioned earlier that, you know, I'd also uh, add that maybe, you know, build a path that leads to more independent entrepreneurs or more independent retail. And I really believe this tool uh, really is in tight alignment with wanting to help these brands to grow more revenue. Um, I'd say even, you know, generating more conversions for the same amount of ad spend. So that's improving your ROAS. I think it's a really exciting mission. I love the why behind it. I just want to thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your vision and knowledge, uh, the incredible team behind you that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting and just, uh, just championing this product. I know it's very impactful um, and I wish you tremendous success uh, into the future. Got it. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. I love your enthusiasm, Steve. Like, it's really great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not really. I, I, I like, you know, I, I'm, I yeah. like to build things and I've been part of this journey from the very beginning. And it's it's awesome as more and more people get on and understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. It's, it's really great to get the enthusiasm. Thanks to everyone for listening. And thanks again to the ROAS team, the audience team here at, at Shopify for building something awesome. All right. Have yourself a great afternoon. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.
Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.